there's only one very simple way to success. You have to make very good shit. And this is yeah. something that's very difficult because it means you're going to have to put a lot of time in a song. With all the chaos around us right now with the COVID-19 pandemic, how is it to survive in these times, you know, without festivals and how do you survive? Well, you know, I always see that DJing and doing what I love is a privilege. Uh, it's a very big privilege. So right now uh, we're on timeout, so to speak. But there's still, uh, there's still a lot of interaction with the fans online. And it's very interesting to me to see how all DJs, now you can see what they do outside of the DJ booth. It's very interesting. But honestly, I cannot wait to be back in the DJ booth. Have you spent a lot of time in the studio during these, I don't know, months, producing music or stuff? Well, in the beginning, I was uh, in Dubai. Now I'm in Europe. And the quarantine is like a lot lighter. So we're getting back yeah. to the day work when it comes down to the studio stuff. So there's a lot of... Uh, uh, studio sessions, but also the labels running again. Everything is moving forward. We're putting out a lot of music, putting out new songs uh, almost every two, three weeks. So very, very busy. Has the lockdown time, you know, created any problems for you, for your creativity or stuff? In the beginning, I, I really didn't feel right to produce because I, I wasn't inspired because I really missed, uh, how you say, I really missed the uh, the people and like the interaction live. But I yeah. really, uh, I grew used to it. I'm comfortable now. So I'm producing. I'm actually uh, like behind your video, there's like my production screen and I'm working on some stuff right now. Basically, music producers are geeks and they yes. live, uh, they live closed in their rooms and produce music. So you recently released with Chica Rose, Speechless. Can you tell us the story behind it and was it produced this year? Uh, yeah, it was produced in February or something, January. We're working together with uh, E from Aztec and uh, we, we had a part of this vocal. So we finished it and then uh, I went to the studio with Chico and I thought it would be a great single for him. So we finished it together and now it's, uh, it's the new track. But this all happened online. I actually, I never met the in person before, and uh, this was during quarantine. Oh, nice, 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 nice. During all these years in your career, what's the most impressive gift you've received from your fans? Oh, I think the, the most impressive gift, the, the handmade, uh, they call it candy. It's like an American thing, like the necklaces and stuff. Yes. They made yes. something special for me. Uh, but I think the, the most important thing is just the, the love and uh, the ideas of fans, you know. Uh, we talk a lot on Discord now. We have a lot of interaction on the Discord. Yes. And it's just very nice to see how everyone's always talking with each other. And also that, like, it's not just, here's my new music, and then everyone leave a like on Instagram. But it's like, we can talk about it and what happened behind it. And there's a conversation. So I, re I really love Discord. It's like a private chat room. Which was the moment from the beginning of your career uh, that made you realize and say, man, I really did it. So I had it when I had my first gig. I had it when my name was on the flyer. I had it when I won a DJ contest. I had it when I was flying economy everywhere because it was just the concept of being a DJ and having to fly for work is like very surreal. And then at one point, uh, like you, you come to so many places in the world, like, Every time it's like, wow, this is amazing. But it's never like you made it. There's always people that have made it more. There's always people to look up to. But I have, I've always felt like like I was successful since since I was a DJ. That's the only thing I wanted to be. I didn't care about like being a successful DJ. I just wanted to be known as a DJ. And like, what do you do? I'm a DJ. But also be for monthly salary wouldn't matter, but that would be my job. That's always what I wanted to do, live in the night. So there's still one more month-ish, still uh, DJ Mag top 100 closes. And if people haven't already voted for you, uh, why should they vote for Afrojack this year? They can, but they don't have to. It's like, if you want to vote for me, I appreciate it. But like all my friends that are like, almost everyone in the top, well, the whole top 100 are, are my friends. So I, I just wish, those that need the, the push, because it's a, it's a great promotional push. I, I've been in the top 10 now almost 10 years. 
So for me, it's like I appreciate it that I'm still there and still recognized. But at the same time, I, I really also wish lots of success and yeah, say blessings for my for my colleagues and everyone that's working so hard. Like for instance, take Timmy Trumpet. Like he's been working on his music for a very long time, and now is finally the time he's starting to really come up. And of course, this is this is great for him. So I, I, th I honestly think he's gonna definitely get a place in the top ten this year. Oh, that's, nice, that's my nice, point. nice, nice. So there are many people out there who are just starting out, and you talked about you know DJ May being a good promotion for them. But those who are just starting out. Uh, What's your words of advice uh, for them to, for, I don't know, to overcome the disapprovals of the haters? Well, the, the haters are always going to be there. You just have to remember that there's always haters in the world. And the more you get in the spotlight, more people are going to hate you. But the only, there's only one very simple way to success. You have to make very good shit. And this is yeah. something that's very difficult because it means you're going to have to put a lot of time in a song. And if people don't like it, no matter how many hours you put in it, and no matter what your opinion is of that they should like it, if they don't like it, they don't like it. So you always have to make great shit. And this is the rule I also put for everyone I always work with. It's nice that you have something nice, but something nice is not going to launch your career. You need to make something great. And if you make something great, and then another great thing, and another great thing, people will start becoming supporters, and then, then stuff starts happening. But take take Jonas Blue for example. Jonas Blue put out he had to put out ten records before he started getting booked. It didn't. It wasn't like one single. It's the same with him on back. He has the the hit now uh, with Roses. This is not going to give him a DJ career. It's it's a great start, but now he needs ten more records. And then, then like the fire is gonna start. Oh. But it's definitely, of course, it's <laughs> having a number one song. Of course, will completely put you in the eye, and then people are listening. So then, you don't have to make another as great song, but still, it has to be very good, and people need to love it. If they don't love it; they're not gonna listen to it, and they're definitely not gonna buy a ticket to come see you play. Yeah. So, uh, making good shit and being uh. consistent with your work is the blueprint for success, basically. Yes, and the nice thing about music is that fans are very, very patient. So if you make three bad songs in a row after a while, yes, they will ignore it, and they will always keep their eye open. That's why still this day you still see artists from 20 years ago still being taken seriously, because they could potentially come with that that new hit. So I think. The only thing you can do is just make lots of music and keep trying and trying and trying and just build your repertoire. And you have to put shit out. And if no label wants to put your shit out, start by putting your own shit out. So what was it like playing at Tomorrowland around the world this year? Like all uh, being digital and stuff. It was weird. We did it in front of the green screen. I was together with Ambush, so that made it a lot easier. But it was definitely weird playing for that. You were, like we were facing front of house. So there was only the production people and yes. some, some, some guests. So we just had to really get in our heads, okay, we're going to pretend we're at Tomorrowland and we have, to, we have to appeal to all the people that are watching at home from Indonesia, from uh, Russia, from Italy, from South Africa, from America, from Mexico, Spain. There's so, there's so many different countries and their fans watching. So no matter how daunting it may seem to be in front of the green screen and putting up a show, you have to remember like the people are going to watch this and they're going to experience it. So you have to do your best. Do you think uh, technology is going to take more and more uh, part in uh, the industry? Like, I don't know, virtual realities, how was, I don't know, Tomorrowland being all... We'll see, we'll see. but I have to say the only thing, and we should see also with phones, no matter how hard you can connect through iPhones, through WhatsApp, through Facebook, through anything digital, end of the day, people require face-to-face uh, -face contact. And this is this is nothing to do with my opinion. This has been proven that we like we have chemicals in our brain, and they're only released when actually with people, with other people. So there will always be the need for 
to getting us as a community face to face. And even if it's digital, they're still going to be once a year a face to face thing. That's why everyone's so excited about TwitchCon or like Comic Con and all these places. All the people that live digitally still come together once a year. And the more they like it, the more often they come together for a mini TwitchCon or a mini Comic Con or Ultra Music Festival and then Road to Ultra and then the Ultra After Party. Like there's all like the big party and then the tiny part is attached to it. People just want to be together. That's what it comes down to. So we EDM Nomad, we are from uh, Romania, Cluj Napoca. Uh, ah, I love Romania. I played there many times. And uh, how was it for you to play at Untold in the past years? It's amazing. It's a sick festival. I was supposed to play this year from I think 3:30 to 5. I don't want to do the last slot because then the, the sun is coming up and everyone's tired. So I really like something earlier, but the, it's it's like an ultra music festival. Yes, it's yes. like an ultra music festival with a Tomorrowland stage. It's very simple. It's it's gigantic. The first time I played it, I was like, what the fuck are you guys doing here? This is like international standard type of shit. This is not a local festival. What does a perfect life mean to you? Exactly my life now. I, uh, I have my family. I have my future wife. I'm getting married. I have everything in its place. I have my label. I have young producers I can help. I have a house that looks like the house from Resident Evil. It's not necessarily that I have all the material stuff I could wish for, but I've had it in the past. So I've become familiar with material things, and it's fun, but it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna build your life. And I really have all the other things that I learned that do build your life, which is time, uh, love, and passion. What do you do in your free time to that makes you happy? Call of Duty, uh, make music. Even though technically it's supposed to be my job, but I just really like making music. Like yesterday, <laughs> I woke up in my, put in my bathrobe. I didn't shower. I didn't eat, I just went to the studio and I was just basically making music all day. Nice. Now I'm going to ask you some short questions like white or black, coffee or tea? Coffee. Festivals or clubs? Festivals. Bitcoin or gold? Both, I don't know. <laughs> I think Bitcoin is the future. Yeah, why? I think the future is going to have a gigantic change in government because everyone's starting to see that they they aren't as smart as they pretend to be. Like especially now with Corona, no one has any clue what they're doing. Close the borders, open the borders, close the yeah. schools, open the schools, don't touch anyone, put your hands in the air, shake it around like you just don't care. Like no one has any clue what the fuck's going on. So I, I think more and more people are starting to rely on themselves and their family to build their life instead of the government. And I think Bitcoin is gonna eventually play a big part of that. Uh, summer or winter? Summer. Waking up early or staying up late? Staying up late. Twitter or Instagram? Twitter. Call of Duty or Counter Strike? Call of Duty. Family Guy or The Simpsons? Ooh. Good question, right? I, I have to go with The Simpsons. Even though Family Guy is usually funnier, like I grew up with The Simpsons and I still watch it almost daily. So I, I have to stick with the original, the legend. I know I used to watch and I'm still watching your live streams, but back in 2020, when you were doing live streams on Ustream, if you remember, uh, and I I know you you used to watch Family Guy or The Simpsons in the background right, while producing music or stuff. Yeah. Uh, one more question, short question. EDM Nomad or EDM Nomad? Uh, only EDM Nomad. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being nice here. Nice to meet you. Likewise.